Then Joe Biden gets to the meat of the matter. Okay, the meat of the matter is that everybody who is not on Joe Biden's side of the aisle is a criminal. Okay, so in the middle, this is really one of the most despicable things that Joe Biden has said. Remember, this is Captain Unity over here. This is the, the great unifier, not a divider. He's somebody who's going to bring us all together. He was going to be a president for all Americans, not just Americans who voted for him, who agreed with him. I said at the time of his inaugural, when he said unity, there are two ways to interpret unity. One way to interpret unity is unity while acknowledging diversity, meaning we all have different opinions on this, but we're still brothers and sisters and we can respect one another. That's one way to achieve unity. We try to do that on the show a lot, right? I have conversations with people on the other side of the aisle. Very nice conciliatory conversations where we clarify what we agree with, what we disagree with, and then we go home friends, right? We try to do that. That's that's one form of unity. And then there's the other form of unity, which is sit down and shut up because Joe Biden wants to do what Joe Biden wants to do. I think it is perfectly clear at this point which, which kind of unity Joe Biden is seeking. He made that absolutely clear last night in one of the most despicable things that Joe Biden has said as president. So he goes and he's attacking Glenn Young. And again, Harvard MBA, former hedge fund guy, Glenn Youngkin is not a rabble rouser in any way, shape or form. And here is Joe Biden suggesting that Glenn Youngkin is equivalent to people who broke into the Capitol building on January 6th and assaulted police officers. Here we go. Extremism can come in many forms, can come in the rage of a mob driven to assault, driven to assault the Capitol. It can come in a smile and a fleece vest. Either way, the big lie is still a big lie. So, Virginia, show up. That's disgusting. And that's truly vile. So you are now comparing Glenn Youngkin, a candidate for the Virginia gubernatorial seat, who is trying to defend parents from the school boards and trying to stop children from being indoctrinated in the notion that America is systemically racist. And he's trying to get rid of like the grocery tax. You're comparing that guy to people who broke into the Capitol building, baying for Mike Pence, and assaulted police officers. And then you wonder why the right just refuses to, to side with the left on anything. It's because of this. I said this the, the day after January 6th. That after January 6th, I said January 6th was despicable. It was terrible. The, what, what people did on that day is really gross. Attacking police officers is criminal behavior. Criminals should go to jail. I said all of that. I also said that this was going to be used by the left as a baton to wield against everyone who disagreed. It was going to be used. And, and this happened over and over. I told this, I, Malcolm Nance did this when I was on HBO with Malcolm Nance. He did this. He said it was 30,000 people attacking the Capitol building. It was not. It was several hundred people attacking the Capitol building at best. And that was a minor contingent of people who were actually at the Stop the Steel rally on January 6th. I didn't even agree with the people at the Stop the Steel rally. But the, the tripartite conflation is amazing. It went from, the rioters are bad to anybody who was at the rally is a rioter to anyone who supported Trump is a rioter to anyone who is conservative at all, whether or not you supported Trump is a rioter. Right. This is this is the move. The move is you disagree with me and you're equivalent to a criminal. And then you wonder why we are paranoid about you labeling parents domestic terrorists. Of course, you're labeling parents domestic terrorists, because after all, if they oppose you, they are domestic terrorists, according to you. Glenn Youngkin is equivalent to January 6th criminals, right? They're all the same. I mean, what a, what a vile statement by Joe Biden, but perfectly predictable because again, he is not kindly old Joe. He is a, he's a pathetic career politician who has never earned his own money a day in his life. Even the period when he was out of government, he was earning based on the fact that he had been inside government. He is a leech on the public trust. The president of the United States is is a career-long manipulator and liar going all the way back. And the fact that he was ever seen as this sort of nice guy is kind of bewildering to me. The American people, by the way, now agree with this. Americans are not in the mood for the Joe Biden nice old man routine because they don't think that he is a nice old man. They think that he is a venal, corrupt old politician, which is exactly what he is, who is masquerading as a moderate, but actually acting as a Trojan horse for radical extremist policy. That's what this presidency is. And he's demonstrating it. He's out there doing it. There is something, I would say, almost tragic about the, about the sort of images that emerge from this administration of this, this very geriatric gentleman who presents this decaying face of an authoritarian bureaucracy that wants to control every aspect of your life while celebrating itself. It's, it's kind of, honestly, like it's, it's very sad for 
our country to have devolved to this point. Truly. Here is the president of the United States yesterday jabbering like an idiot because this is what he does frequently. We're taking a page from Terry's book when he was governor and when he'd be governor next time. We're emerging from this pandemic. We want to expand pre-K for three and four-year-olds, millions of pre-K. I don't even know what he's talking about. I love Terry McAuliffe in the background clapping like he understands what the hell Joe Biden just said. Other than he wants to make Trump available to everyone. Right? This is the person who wants to control every aspect of your life. This is the person who says that you, the parent, should not control your own child's education. This is the person who says that if you oppose him and you oppose any of his policies, you're equivalent to people who assaulted the Capitol building and tried to kill the vice president. That's, that's, that's that guy. And when he says that extremism can come in many forms, extremism or radical, political radicalism, not terrorism, political radicalism can look like a doddering old man who can barely stumble through a paragraph. And today, that's exactly what it looks like. In fact, it looks like a bunch of ridiculous buffoons dancing on stage. And just a quick recommendation to our politicians, don't dance on stage. It's never good. I'm gonna have to put together a compilation of politicians dancing on stage. Like some of us know that we're bad dancers. And then unless explicitly at a concert and pulled up on stage, we just will not dance. And even if that does happen, we're embarrassed. That, that did happen to me one time. It was very embarrassing. Uh, when politicians go up on stage and then apparently volunteer to dance, look, look, I mean, look at this. You got Joe Biden in the middle. He's got his coat turned up because apparently it's cold. And he's bent over, like over himself. And then you've got Terry McAuliffe dancing like a ridiculous human being. I don't even know what he thinks he is doing. Just ridiculous. And and all these white people clapping to themselves. Ah, ah, just, just, ah. And there's Terry McAuliffe doing the inflatable man outside the car wash. <laughs> Uh, the, these are the, it, honestly, honest to God, if you vote for this in Virginia, you deserve what you get. Uh, I'm, I'm with H.L. Mencken. The American people get what they deserve good and hard. They're getting it in California with Gavin Newsom, where they voted overwhelmingly to, to keep him in office. And if you vote for McAuliffe, you deserve what you get, frankly. The battle for the culture is heating up. We here at The Daily Wire are making some big moves. So be sure to like, subscribe, ring that bell, because you're not going to want to miss a single moment.